Okay. So we're definitely live. That means this microphone will pick up uh, what you guys are talking about. But you should be able to now see. Um, oh, gotcha. You should now be able to see my screen and um, the view behind me. So I'm just going to do one of these real quick. Okay, lots of setup. We're figuring some stuff out. Okay, so I want to start first by kind of summarizing what the uh, creator was talking about with each of those little sections and then give you a demonstration of how you can kind of start practicing, sketching, generally drafting out anatomy, and we'll build on this um, with our day tomorrow after I show you the Hero Forge thing. So that first thing was the chest. The chest is mostly made up of three key parts. You have the actual chest itself, you have the um, little middle section, and then you have like the crotch section or the underwear section, whatever you want to call it. Um, but that is the three main portions of the torso, which is a majority of what the body um, is occupying in space in that sense. And the way that I perceive um, each of these three pieces is pretty geometrically with a mix of contoured and straight lines. So what does that actually mean in the case of drawing anatomy. I imagine the chest, the majority of where your lungs and heart are and stuff, that's gonna be pretty angular because it has a really important job. So thinking in shape language, we want it to be sturdy. So I kind of imagine my chests as like rectangular, boxy. We'll draw this at a little bit of an angle here. Kind of a box situation because that's gonna hold our shoulders Right up here, this is a really squashed and terrible box, so just trust me. Um, but that's going to hold our shoulders right at the top here, our neck right here. And this is generally kind of the shape of your rib cage. So if you think about, let's see if I can draw a rib cage from memory. Those look like pants, but just give me a second. Your ribs are holding all of your important guts in a little protective shell like this. And so you want that portion of your character's body to uh, invoke kind of a similar design. The next part is that middle section is where I start introducing some of the um, more contoured lines that I just connect from these bottoms right down here and then just make it uh, kind of a squashed, you can imagine like a water damaged box, I guess. This is your stomach, your diaphragm, um, you know, your belly button's probably right here, right? This is that second portion of your torso um, and it's the softer because it's less boned based on the rib cage. It's a little bit softer, so that means it's going to have contoured lines as compared to much straighter lines. Does that make sense? And then this is all I'm drawing all kind of from a one point perspective. If we imagine my vanishing point is back here, it's not exactly, but like this is just for demonstration purposes. And now you want to do the, um, the undies section. If you think about like Captain Underpants, how it's shaped like home plate a little bit. The same rule applies because that's where our hips are going to connect in these divots of our um, our third section of our chest here. So I'm looking for those intersection corners. So I'm just going to continue building from those reference points like this. I'm going to pull down some straighter lines, but instead of them being, um, sorry, not straight in the way that they're, um, straight in the way that they're not contoured, excuse me, because this has straight lines, but these are going to converge more towards an underwear shape. Um, with a flat bottom kind of like this. So I'm going really fast, I'm sorry. But with these three sections, we have a pretty basic layout of how like a human trunk, a human torso is um, laid out while also giving us a lot of customizability in our constructive or in our construction um, point of view. So you can draw a little circle for where the shoulder is, for where the hip is. You can imagine that the this other circle, you kind of got to look through the shape is over here. This other circle for the other hip is over here. And then from here, we can do our one-to-ones. That was not one-to-one. -one. And just kind of pull out what will become our uh, heads and arms and stuff like that. So big three pieces on the chest are that chest section, which is more boxy. The middle section, which is more curved. And then the underwear section, which is shaped like a trapezoid or underpants of that kind of uh, that kind of vibe. That's the chest summary. That's what I'm thinking about while I'm drawing. So like, for example, if I wanted to draw my character um, in a little bit of a different pose, I'm not, I don't have a reference right now. So this is coming straight off the dome and it is going to look bad. That's why I use references. But I focus first on that boxy section. 
say I want to, I want to, my character from the back, for example, focus on that boxy section where the shoulders lie and then just pull it down to kind of section off about a rib cage's worth. There's not really much measurement I'm doing besides just kind of, I'm not really measuring besides just kind of thinking, picturing how my character looks. I would be using a reference normally, um, but this is where my head is going to connect. My shoulders are going to be right here. And then this is kind of my spine going down the back of my character up into their head. So we got that first part. Next part is the squishier section. The squishier section, you can imagine there's some more muscle definition from the back portion of your character. Um, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of that detail kind of vaguely. And there's my squishy section rounded off. It's a little different from the back because I can't see as much of the stomach or the front part of the squishy section. So it's not gonna be as um, prevalent as it is like right here with the side uh, in this case. And then now I'm thinking about the underwear section that I want to be pretty proportional to my uh, my top section so that I don't end up with a weird skinny bottom half as compared to like a more muscular or larger larger frame top half. I'm just going to gently continue that line into kind of that underwear shape that I'll connect my hips to here and here. And then my arms connect here and here. So we have this, this, arm, arm. If my character is like hugging someone, for example. Um, that's what I'm thinking about when I'm drawing out the, uh, the chest anatomy. All right. So now let's move on to the next one was skulls. Number two skulls. Similar constructions apply where there's three major pieces where there's, and you're welcome to draw along with me. Um, I'm just going to be talking for most of this up here, but, um, skulls have three parts. They have the actual skull themselves. If I could spell. Skull, they have a mask or a face. I like thinking about it as a mask, though. I can picture that a little bit better. And then they have the neck, which connects at a bunch of uh, various points. So you want to do them in this order, similarly to how you did the chest construction. I'm going to start with my skull, just doing some ghosting circles like this. There's my skull. That contains my brain, my ears, all my fun jelly bits from my um, humanistic perspective. Connected to... One portion of this skull is going to be the mask. So if I want my character kind of looking in this direction, I'm going to think about how the top and the bottom of the mask are going to fit on this skull shape. So I think the top of it is going to go right about where I imagine the eyebrows are. Pull that down past the skull and then just connect it where the chin would be. And then I like doing a little something like that. So you can kind of get a feel for how the face occupies the skull space. So there's our skull. We did our mask, which is just this little rectangular. Uh, if you think about it like a mask, you can draw faces removed from skulls. So let's say I want to draw a face looking up. Do something like this. There's a little bit of detail back there. My character's looking directly up. If I want my character to look forward and down, my forehead is going to be closer and with foreshortening, stuff like that. My features are going to be, oh, it doesn't really read like that. But um, anyway. I'm thinking about where this mask is positioned is how my face is going to appear. Okay, so then uh, the neck is going to go all the way and connect up at the back, but our face is going to cover a majority of our neck when you're drawing um, anatomy in this sense. So what I like to do is kind of pull a gentle neck from the back of the skull, kind of where it connects at the, uh, like the nape of your neck, right at the bottom of your hairline. Pull that down like this. Do another little one from the chin, and that gives me um, a lot more interesting head design that I can pose in different directions. Like if we drew one from the side looking forward, start with our skull, draw a mask coming down off the side like this. There's an eye right here. There's a mouth right here. Maybe there's a nose right here. Pull my neck from the back of my head and then the rest of my neck from the bottom of my chin. I'm going pretty long for like demonstration purposes. You can adjust some of these proportions, maybe make the mask a tiny bit smaller, make the neck a bit shorter, and it's going to look maybe uh, more human. Um, this ironically looks less human, but skull, mask, and neck are the three pieces of kind of drawing a, a face looking in a variety of directions. I'll show you. I did a better example while I was taking notes here. Let me find it. There we go. So I start with my skull, which tends to be uh, ideally a little bit more circular. Connect the mask on it, and then just uh, the neck will kind of spring out of the direction that you're looking. So, for example, this one looking away, 
my neck is going to cover a majority of my mask. I'm not going to see a lot of my mask features. So I'm going to put more detail into the neck to communicate that my character's skull is facing away from the viewer. All right. After skulls were legs, which was a really interesting way of thinking about it compared to what I am used to. Legs, so we should be on number three. Legs are a combination of very simply a straight line and a curved line. I think that's how you spoke. Yeah, there we go. Straight and curved. And they're going to alternate. The important detail is that these two pieces are going to alternate. Well, that, pretend that says alternate with one another. So if I have, let's say, like, uh, imagine there's a chest up here, a chest section. But we have this underwear piece, this Captain Underpants uh, layout here. My legs are going to come off of the hips. They're going to connect with these cylinders right here. And they're going to have a straight line and then a curved line. The thighs, typically, the front part of the leg, if your character's facing forward, that's going to be the straight portion. So I'm going to start with two straight portions. And then I'm going to do my two curved portions sort of like this. Just pretend that this connects like that. So now that I've got my straight portion on the left, and my curved portion on the right, I'm going to flop the order for the stuff below the knee. So if my character's got some uh, knee angles, actually action happening here. I'm going to go more curved line and then a straighter line to create more of a uh, leg shape. So we'll go curved line and then a straight line. It creates that muscle definition and that knee definition in a much faster way. So like if we were drawing legs that were, um, let's say kind of in like a triangular shape, we're gonna go straight and then curved. And then from this knee, we'll come straight and curved. And that's gonna have our foot right here. Imagine it's connected at the ankle, it's kind of a bad example. But then since this foot is in, or this leg is in front of the other leg, if my character is sitting right here, then we're gonna come uh, just a little bit further with the straight back here, this leg back here, and then come down, just kind of overlap the legs as best you can with this one, the one that's closer to the viewer, gonna have more detail than the one that's behind the viewer. But basically straight, curved, curved, straight. It's gonna create um, some more interesting leg combinations for y'all. And then the uh, fourth thing I'll show y'all, is the arm kind of idea. The way that I think about it is I usually have a torso established like this. I usually start with how close, sorry, how close are the hands to, um, I'm gonna start timing. How close are the hands to my uh, front perspective? And I'll start with usually like a circle or like a, um, like that rectangle shape for the basic uh, hand placement. But I want to think about in relationship to my character's torso, how are the hands going to be laid out? Then, now that I have my hand in position, one, two, three, four, five, I'm going to pull similarly to kind of what I showed you with the legs just now. The closer part is going to have more detail, and then it's going to connect back to the shoulder, but we're going to draw it as a cylinder instead. So something like this. That's a terrible cylinder. Oh my God, that's a horrible cylinder. Let me try that again. There's my wrist. There's my hand. Cylinder moving backwards. And then seeing through, looking at the other cylinder, which is going to connect right here. Just imagine this is a dotted line. That's going to go backwards towards the shoulder. And then it's going to be another cylinder. There's that overlap right here. That becomes our elbow. So with hands, if they're drawing at rest, cylinder for the shoulder, this is the bicep, the fore or the upper arm. And then you can build your second cylinder with the first one, and it's going to create, well, that's, anyway, the, my proportions are off. But the construction idea remains the same. We'll come on, make our hands, that's a huge hand. Okay, but two cylinders and make them overlap is gonna be a really easy way. Or you could do ellipse like I usually do. Gonna have them overlap like this, try to make them the same size. Let's say my character is waving. Their arm's gonna be a little bit longer, a little bit more extended. There's my upper arm. There's my forearm. And then my hand is gonna be somewhere right here. Right, Just this is for demonstration's sake. They're not obviously gonna be uh, that large. 
So, um, this video is a good place to kind of check back in to double or not double check, but combine with what I've shown you here. Um, the last thing I want to demo in our little bit of Zoom room here um, is this cool resource called Hero Forge. So let me uh, not do that, actually. Just kidding. One sec. There we go. All right. So I'm going to stop my video, share my screen here. There we go. This website, which I'll link in our agenda, is designed for creating D and D minis or Warhammer minis or other um, ver uh, variety of tabletop games. But um, the reason we're going to use it in this class is because there is a ton of different details and um, little things that you can customize about these characters that gives you a super cool reference uh, that you can copy off of or create into a diff or a more detailed drawing. But also, it's a really useful tool to think about um, silhouettes and character design as a whole, like how this character influenced. I was just clicking random stuff, so it's a skeleton with uh, frog legs um, and a turtle shell, obviously. But you can just click around. You can't see my screen, can you? OK. Yes. OK, sorry. Never mind. But what you can do, there's all these different categories. I want you guys to mess around with this a little bit uh, today, um, if we have the time. But you can combine all of these different pieces and then make all these adjustments. It's not wanting to display now, of course. Let me refresh. Okay, cool. So there's all types of stuff that you can customize all the way down to the clothing. All right. And you can create with these pieces a really interesting character that you could further develop into a drawing or a comic or an art piece. Like you can use it for any of your D and D games if you are uh, into that kind of thing, right? It's just a really cool tool that I want you guys to explore and think about how um, the pieces of the character are going to inform how they work or what they do, whatever. Um, in that case, so. We have five minutes left here. I want you guys to mess around on Hero Forge a little bit to kind of see what it has to offer. Um, and then tomorrow we'll design a character using Hero Forge that will then draw. So I'm going to close up the Zoom room real quick. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to put